Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I have a sweet sheath to show you today. This thing is really cool. I haven't been this excited about one in a little while. So uh, it's just another first for me. And I think it's going to be something that really catches on. Um, it's not an original creation of mine. So I'm not trying to claim it as one of those, as like my invention or something like that. Uh, but this is the first time I've done one and uh, they seem to be picking up in popularity in general. So I'm thinking I'll probably be getting a lot of orders for these and I'm excited for it because it's a really cool concept. Uh, so anyway, you already know what it is because you saw the thumbnail, but I'm just going to go through all this preamble anyway. This is a chest rig for the Topps Operator 7 and the Topps Little Bugger and a pile of accessories. So let's get into this. Um, the reason why people have been specifically requesting the Operator 7 Little Bugger from me is because... Sometime toward the end of last year, I did a couple sheaths for Tim from Everyday Tactical Vids that had a Topps Operator 7 with a little bugger piggybacked on it. And his video on that got a lot of attention. And uh, since then, I've just been getting requests, probably one a week or so, for specifically that pairing of knives. So, um, anyway, this is the first time that I've actually ended up doing a sheath that pairs both of them. I've done a bunch of both of them individually. But since then, this is the first time I've actually piggybacked them together. So I was excited about that because I love both these knives, but uh, mostly excited because of the style of sheath that this is. So Sebastian from California ordered a couple things from me, and I just did the video on this more Eldris EDC sheath. You should go check that out. But I had said in that, it's really rare that I get a, a couple different orders from a customer, a couple different sheaths. And have to just shoot them in separate videos because they are both so cool. But uh, this is one of those cases. So Sebastian, kudos man. You have good taste, according to me. I think these came out really cool. And I uh, hope you really like and enjoy these. So let's see what this thing has on it. This has got a Lansky LCD-02 tactical sharpening rod. It has a Sunto MC2 compass. It has an Exotac fire rod two AA batteries, and those are replacement batteries that go into this Streamlight Protac two AA flashlight. Um, he, like I said, asked for a chest rig, and I had to build it, well, I added to it after I had initially built it. So bear with me. This thing has a lot of excess strapping on it. You guys know my policy. Anytime I do like a paracord necklace or anything with nylon straps, I always leave a bunch of excess on there because I want to make sure that if I'm sending this to somebody that has a much bigger body frame than me, that it's still going to work for them. So, um, yeah. So anyway, Sebastian, you have a lot of excess strap on here to work with. I hope that all works for you. Um, let me show you what I would recommend for how to put this thing on. So obviously, once you get it, sorry, I'm cutting back, doubling back real quick. Once you figure out the adjustment, you know, the actual tightness and whatnot that you like on it, I would afford yourself probably like two to three inches extra per strap and then a little excess beyond that and cut it off. Uh, you can cut it and melt the ends of the, of the uh, strap, keep it clean looking. Um, and the two to three inches of excess per buckle or per strap I'm recommending for when you change clothes so if you end up having you know you wear this in the winter time and you're wearing it over a heavy jacket or something like that you're going to need it to be just a little bit bigger so I would recommend playing a little bit with uh, you know the the adjustments and how long how short it's got to be and leave yourself enough excess on it that you can adjust and still have enough uh, nylon to grab to pull tight and all that so uh, that said originally I made so <laughs> real quick, this triangle buckle on the back is Kydex. This is something I made uh, because I couldn't find a machined one. I couldn't find a part that was pre-made. I have no idea what the actual name of this type of buckle is, but I, I really had a hard time uh, finding anything for it. Uh, I found some that were like really big, uh, but this is about the only thing I could find in this size. So in any event, um, originally I had the straps coming off of each of the slots on that. So three straps and they were going all the way to the sheath and coming back and meeting up with the buckle that was on the, the inroad or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it was that long plus excess for the body type scenario. I just got done rambling about 
And then uh, I decided to add an actual buckle system that would be a little more comfortable. I think it makes it function a little better. Uh, so this is what we're dealing with now. So you have, this is hard attached. There's three straps coming off of, of the uh, sheath itself. So we've got one, two, and then a third up here. All of them are hard attached, riveted on there. Um, but the straps are going through the milled slots. So it's a stronger design than having them like riveted to the sheath itself. They are riveted to themselves to create stoppers. So the cords, not, or the straps not going to come off of the sheath. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, so anyway, that makes it that much longer and I left a lot of excess on all of it. So point of that, like five minutes that I just talked, uh, is that you're going to see a lot of excess strapping on this right now. But that's not actually how it's going to look once uh, the user has trimmed off the excess that they don't need. So bear with me on that, guys. I'm just going to let it hang free. Uh, but imagine it's not there because it really shouldn't be there uh, once it's all adjusted to the, uh, the end user. So, okay. How I recommend putting it on. Once you have all of your adjustments determined, which is probably going to take you know five or six times taking the sheath on and off and uh, adjusting your straps as needed, I would recommend leaving the two at the tip buckled at all times. Just leave those buckles hooked up. Uh, I don't see any reason to really adjust them. The easiest way to, to get this sheath on and off is to undo the one by the handle. And so you would put this on over your shoulder like so. You're going to want it to stay kind of to the left so that this buckle stays in front of you rather than trying to put it on where it's at and it's kind of hard to maneuver over here. So just hold this buckle or something. That's what I do. Hold it like that. Reach behind you and grab the, the one that's hanging. And then you just reach over, clip yourself in, and then you can kind of rotate the sheath to where it's going to be at. And if you need to, you can you know make little adjustments from there tighten it down, whatever you got to do. Um, so this thing is super comfortable. I am really, really impressed with uh, how well it wears on the chest, how secure it feels, and um, how much it takes the load off of like your pants especially. Like I was saying, I try to talk guys out of... Uh, actually, maybe I did that. I had a, a first take that got interrupted by a phone call, so... <sighs> And it's too early in the day for me to remember when I said what. So uh, I was saying before, I think in a different take, that this, uh, to me, this and Baldrick Carry are the way to go. If you're going to order a really big, heavy system, I, I think a dangler, a lot of guys really like the idea of a dangler, but you need to think, I think, long and hard about that, like how it's going to feel having that much weight swinging on your side. And how it's going to feel having one attach point where the weight is pulling on your belt. Um, for me, that's a no-go. I really don't like that. Uh, if it doesn't bother you, if you like that, by all means, order what you want to order. Uh, I'll build anything for you guys. You know that. I love it. I love my job. And I love hooking you up with what makes you happy. But I would definitely recommend considering a Baldrick sling uh, for the load bearing to be on the shoulder. Or this chest rig kind of, you know, setup. It's like a three-point chest harness I guess you'd call it um, this is really really comfortable and um, I think the chest is kind of one of those storage spots that's underutilized you know it doesn't you don't feel like you're carrying extra weight around and as long as it's not sticking off of you very far it doesn't put any extra strain on your back which is really nice I sincerely could not be happier with how comfortable this is and I'm definitely gonna be building myself a couple of these for uh, my camping gear so Anyway, um, what was I going to say? So, I think I already told you what's on it. Yeah, I must have. We're almost 10 minutes in. <laughs> I definitely told you what's on it. So, let's just take a look at it all in action. So, we have this Lansky LCD-02. I highly recommend orienting it so that the fatter side is up. Obviously, for the reason that if, for whatever reason gonna get you know gravity's gonna pull it downward it's not gonna pass through the the uh, holder this way whereas the other way it technically could fall out if enough you know whatever force if a big enough impact occurred like if you jumped off something maybe that would be enough when you land for it to kind of slip out so to avoid that I would just orient it this way and you can see you can read Lansky 
upright in this position. Um, then we have the MC, MC2 compass from Sunto. This holder came out really nice. It's super smooth, and this is a great compass. It's got the mirror, a little line through it to shoot your azimuth. It's just a just a nice nice compass. I really like Sunto. Kind of a fanboy. Um, this guy I would orient so that the hinge of that cover there is pretty much flush with the bottom of the holder that it's in. So it's upside down technically, but the reason why I would put it like that is because that makes it so that none of the compass is hanging off. If you orient the other way, it's going to have to hang off. This plastic piece is going to be off the bottom down to here. It's just not comfortable. It doesn't look as nice. And the way it's oriented now with all this stuff on here, I just kind of had to find homes for everything and it took a few different tries to get it to uh, to be as accessible as it is but the way it's here now if you push it up it'll kind of naturally stopper itself against the Lansky tactical sharpening rod so you know should be fine it's still easy to get at and so is the Lansky you don't have to move anything but they kind of interact at that junction point there so uh, just keep that in mind with you know how you end up putting it back in this is what I would recommend um, of course, we have the Exotac fire rod on top, standard kind of holder riding on the spine of the sheath, easy enough to get at. And then we have these two AA batteries, and uh, the one thing with this holder is, so I did cut this little finger push in here, this groove, so you can get the battery out far enough to really comfortably grab it. If, you, if you're having a hard time grabbing that second battery out, um, maybe just drop the lance, or drop the drop the compass down it'll stay in drop it down and you get both sides of it are accessible there so 99% of the time you're going to be using both of these batteries to replace the batteries in your flashlight but if you only need to remove one then definitely put the outside one back in there's stronger retention on this outer side than there is on the inner side I just kind of had to do it that way to make it work but um, both of these when they're in there together they push against each other and the retention is really excellent so all right that's that the flashlight holder is very unique so it's two attach points and i did it this way because of how much uh how much stuff is on here and where the screws are going through and also because of the geometry of the light itself but how you want to operate this is you kind of brace your sheath it doesn't take a ton of force but i'm saying brace it just so that it doesn't slide around on you um, you can actually push it right from the lens, it makes it a little bit com more comfortable maybe, but you want to just grab it out of here. Once it's cleared out of the lens housing, you just kind of lift it away from your chest. And you can see that this side has a slot, a little channel cut in it, not only to account for the uh, pocket clip on here so that that's not an issue with, you know, you can't just have necessarily one tube that a light goes through. It has to work out just right for that to happen. This light does not work with that kind of holder. So anyway, I cut that channel for the pocket clip, but also so that you'd be able to have uh, easier access to your light and do something like this. So how you put it back in, you put the lens between the two holders and you just kind of snap it down into place. And then you push it forward so that the lens goes back inside its holder. And there's that. Uh, the light you guys know, uh, I try to make everything as utilitarian as possible. Ideally, the light would just be one of those things where you could kind of grab it off and just use it. Um, you know, if you want to, I guess you could cut you could cut a channel in this side too, and you'd be able to break it free or something. But you, you would just wouldn't be as strong of a holder, so I wouldn't recommend it. But um, so yeah, it just didn't work out quite like that because of all the stuff on it and where it has to be and yeah, all that. All the scenario, uh, all the, the elements that come into play on it. Um, however, I think there are still some uses for this that maybe are uh, beyond the obvious. So one thing is if you need to like do something in the dark, read a map in the dark, whatever, you can turn this light on and use it while it's on your, still on you. You could even twist the sheath up so that you have it more directly in front of you. You can see my hands are illuminated quite far from my body. So that does work. That's a good solution there. Another thing you can do is if, you know, for whatever reason you were in some dire emergency where you needed to be able to shine your light and react very quickly, what I would recommend is 
just undo the buckle under your right arm and then you have a fully articulating light right there it's very easy good to go if you needed to react to that bear or whatever it is you still have your knives really quickly accessible too so maybe you unclip draw a knife and then you have that flashlight just ready to go so it's pretty cool I also like that when you push the tail cap the light is fully forward already locked into place so you have the resistance necessary you don't have to kind of you're not going to push the light forward more and have to chase it or brace it with one hand and push the light you know button with the other hand whatever it is so anyway I think that's a pretty cool uh, potential use for it there. Hopefully you never need to use it like that, but it is there if you do. Um, as far as the knives go, you got the little bugger here. And one of the things that I was really happy with uh, how it came out was the fact that because of how I set all this stuff up, the little bugger kind of elevated off the surface of the TOPS Operator 7 is that you can actually get your fingers behind it so you get a really good full grip on this little bugger which isn't the case for a lot of piggybacks uh, sometimes you know trying to be really low pro uh, you kind of end up having to do like a weird fingertip grip on the piggyback not with this thing you can actually get your fingers all the way behind it just grip it the way you'll be gripping it anyway draw it off and you're good to go so this came out great very happy with that um, and then the Operator 7, I put just a little extra retention on it, so it's not going to feel quite as buttery smooth as what I usually do for a draw. It's going to have more of like a crisp pop, like, you know, break kind of feel to it. But it does have still a pretty easy draw. Um, and the reason I put extra retention on it, that is intentional. I did it because it is a very heavy knife, and it's angled so that it could fall out if you have a, a strong enough impact. So... Obviously, there is still a point, there is still an amount of force that will overcome the retention of the sheath, so you do have to be a little bit mindful and careful with that. But, for the most part, running, uh, hiking, jumping, whatever, you're not going to run into a problem where this just falls out or anything. Um, so, yeah. And it's still easy enough to draw with a thumb ramp, but you can, yeah, you can see, if I grip and rip... The chest rig is probably going to move on me a little bit. No big deal. But if you use the thumb ramp, you can get it to stay pretty still when you do it. It is a very smooth draw altogether. Uh, just not on the, uh, the actual brake for retention, that click there. So, looking at the back of it, imagining the straps not hanging off there all the way down to my ankles. This is actually a pretty low profile, very comfortable system. And yes, it does work with backpacks. Let me show you really quick. So I got a bag over here, just waiting. So even for as wide as this, I mean, this is a big knife and I left a lot of excess beyond the knife itself. Just to give you an idea. There's like four inches of sheath past the tip of this knife. Well, maybe like two and a half. There's a few inches of, of uh, excess beyond this uh, to give room for all the attachment mounting. So even with all of that length on there, it still doesn't really interfere too much with, uh, with backpack straps. The only thing I would say is you probably want to just be careful about where and how you weave your chest straps for a backpack so that you don't have it like awkwardly below the blade of one of your knives. So when you draw it, you slice your bag open or some slice the strap open. But, um, but yeah, there's my backpack. There we go. <laughs> Keep grabbing my harness excess. So, man, these excess straps are getting in the way. So yeah, what I would do is probably run the chest strap directly under the harness, like under your harness straps as well, uh, because you already know that those are out of the way. Can't seem to get it in there. There we go. Sorry. All these freaking straps are just getting in the way of everything. Anyway, so you can see it does work in conjunction with a backpack. Obviously, with the adjustability of the straps themselves, you can adjust them for wearing different thicknesses of clothes, like I was saying, your winter stuff. And, uh, yeah, you can get all that going. So 
All right, guys, I am 20 minutes into this video, and uh, I should probably just end it here because I've already talked your ears off. So I really appreciate you sticking out through all my rambling, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this sheath and this video. If you did, hit that like button. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of this thing. Let me know what you think of chest rigs. I know this is pretty busy. This is just what Sebastian asked for. This is what he takes with him out in the, the woods. So uh, I wanted to make sure it was all on there for him. But I think um, this would be an especially great system for even just one or two knives um, on the chest. This is an exceptionally comfortable position. Um, yeah. Can't recommend it highly enough. This is awesome. So... Thank you, Sebastian, for a fun project. I hope you enjoy your sheath, brother. And for the rest of you out there, comment down below. Let me know what you like, don't like about it. Let me know what you think of these knives. And uh, let me know what you have for gear out there that's like this or alternative ways to carry that you think are um, better than the conventional dangler, tech lock, all that good stuff. So, all right, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe, and stick around for the next one. God bless.